Thanks for joining me, Scott Ryan. You know, I, I am amazed at what lengths people and companies are willing to go in order to exculpate this saboteur in Washington, D.C., who uh, goes by the name of Barack Hussein Obama. I, I've noticed that the, uh, the new inflation is expressed not in higher prices, but instead all these companies are willing to try to deceive you, essentially covering up for the crimes, for the treason of this administration by tricking you into thinking you're getting what you've always gotten for the same price. And, you know, we know that the, uh, the, the shrinkage, it's been going on now for years, uh, at a rapid rate, it's accelerating under, under this saboteur at 1600. The ice cream that we've eaten for years used to be half gallon containers. Now there are like 1.5 liters. Everything is shrinking. Even look at the Coca-Cola cans, all the soda cans. They've turned into these little tiny, I, I don't remember how many ounces they are, but all your sodas, they're, they're just tiny little cans they're offering them in. Oh, how cute. It's unbelievable. Why won't they just raise the prices like they always did and thereby put a warning label on there, attributing it properly to the crime, the collusion between Barack Hussein Obama, the Senate and the Congress, and the Federal Reserve. Now, this is treason. I will get back to that later. The catalyst that really set off this, uh, me making this video, was I, I was at the store the other day and I saw a large package of Reese cups. And you could see them here. They're normal size Reese cups. They look every bit as they, the same as they have for the past, well, 42 years of my life. But when I went to open them, look at these. They have shrunken. The diameter is about a half inch smaller. They're in the same size package. Each individual cup is packaged in the same size package with a bunch of air in this tiny little Reese cup. And it's, and it's deformed on top of that. But they are selling this to me as though it is the regular Reese cup. And only do I find out when I come home to eat it. Now, it's, it's a Reese cup. It might seem a bit out of perspective but it is just one in a million examples. And the high gasoline prices, which nobody's griping about, that's all we heard about under Bush, when they were half the price they are a gallon as it is now, they were calling for his head. Meanwhile, this, this saboteur is destroying our currency, is robbing us blind. And, and all these people in the media are covering up for him. Even companies are covering up for him by this shrinkage, instead of raising the price as historically occurs with products when debasement of currency occurs, the blame should go on the people, the criminals who are committing the crime. Don't try to deceive us into screwing us out of products and charging us the same price and shrinking the, pro the product. Don't try to deceive us. Let the blame go to where it should be properly ascribed. It's insulting. When I say it is treason, I mean it is treason. And one thing, I, I was watching actually on um, History Channel the other day, there was a show called Ancients Behaving Badly. In this particular episode, you can see it online, I'll link to it on uh, tableofwisdom.com, but and I'll, I'll show you some clips, but it, it was all about Nero, and I, it really amazed me. If you watch this, you it, you will think about Barack Obama throughout the episode. This this guy was disgusting. He was all about lavish living. He was addicted to the limelight. He disgraced himself not only in debauchery but also in theater and the chariot races. He craved the attention and neglected his duties. 
the more he did it, the more attention and public adulation he needed. He wanted to be a star, and he would bring home awards, and he would win all kinds of awards by bribing the, the uh, judges. Not though, I mean, sure, they probably had no choice. The guy was evil and probably would have killed them otherwise. Nero goes beyond caring about what the public thinks. Nero was now ready to be the man he always wanted to be. And according to Suetonius, that man was a poet, an actor, and a musician. Which doesn't sound too bad to us today, but in ancient Roman terms, it's dynamite. Because in ancient Rome, actors are on the same status as prostitutes. So it would be like the President of the United States today publicly soliciting on Sunset Boulevard. Respectable Romans just don't do that. Nero has now become emperor of Rome, but rather than just pure power, what he has now achieved is the stage that he has always wanted. He now has the platform which he can fulfill his dream of everybody loving him. He is now literally the center of attention of the world. Nero's desire for attention spirals out of control, just as a historic catastrophe strikes Rome. Anyone who displeases him doesn't last long. No one dares plot against him. When Romans aren't fearing for their lives, they're squirming with embarrassment over Nero's lowbrow antics on stage. Psychological analysis suggests that Nero just can't help himself. Nero has now become addicted to the crowd. He's totally hooked on adulation. Any amount of it is not enough. This is part of his personality pathology. It shows that deep inside of him, he needs that continued love by the crowd. He's become like a rock star, on call 24 hours Not a day. only does that aspect of Nero remind me of Obama, the sick and twisted, debauched aspect, but they talked about how Nero, in his lavish spending, after the burning of Rome especially, he made this palatial estate for himself, he debased the currency, and they show in this program a clever way in which they did it, and they, they made it look like, I mean, the same gold content or the same silver content, and, and but inside it, it wasn't even just gold or silver plated, it was thick, and they put, I believe it was lead inside, and it, it was very cutting edge in its trickery. And they said that if he had been caught, of course, the penalty would have been death because it is treason. Nero loves himself. He loves other people to love him, but he is not psychotic. He is not insane. There's no evidence that he's hallucinatory or delusional. He continues to be very planful and very goal-directed. Now, those goals are all directed at making him look better, but there's no evidence that this guy is psychotic. While half the city starves, Nero builds a palace, but hits a roadblock. He's running out of money. Nero won't let that stop him. He has a plan. The workhorse of the Roman economy is the denarius. Rock solid because it's 100% silver, guaranteed. In antiquity, it was very important for the ordinary person, the man on the street as it were, to have faith in the silver content in the coin that he was paid in, whether he was a Roman soldier, whether he was a senator, or whether he was just an agricultural laborer. Historians say Nero figures out a way to stretch the denarius. He intimidates coin makers at the mint into watering down the silver content. But that wasn't backed up by previous chemical analysis of a denarius from Nero's reign, identified by Nero's face on the coin. This showed the coin to be pure silver. So it sounded like the whole story was an exaggeration. But Dr. Matthew Ponting decided to dig deeper, literally, and take the bold move to drill into the interior of one of these precious coins. 
the analysis uh, will be able to tell us exactly how much copper was added to debase the, uh, the silver coinage by Nero, uh, it, because it's been taken from inside the coin itself, missing any surface layers which would have had their silver content enriched prior to striking. A sample from inside the coin is passed through an atomic absorption spectrometer to measure the silver content. We're getting a figure of uh, 100 and 170 parts per million on this particular sample, which calculated back to account for dilution factors, gives us a figure of slightly less than 80%. This would have uh, saved the Imperial Administration a significant amount of money. The other 20% is plain copper. So Nero really does debase the Roman currency and uses the money for his grand building projects. But if his scam is exposed, he'll be lynched. Dr. Ponting has discovered that Nero goes to great lengths to hide his tracks diluting the precious metal content inside the coins but leaving the surface pure silver. So it is different to, to laying on a uh, say a silver foil over a base metal core which was the technique that was used by forgers to actually forge coins. In this case it's a much more sophisticated process where you're actually enhancing um, the surface silver content of the coin only. Nero's audacious gamble with the Roman currency was without precedent. For the first time, we see a systematic and quite serious debasement of the silver content of the major silver unit of the Roman Empire, the silver denarius. Nero is now completely out of control. And that is probably the number one reason why Obama is the modern day Nero, because of his lavishness, his debasing of the currency, his reckless spending is very Nero-like, but it, it just blows the mind how far people, sick, obstinate people, who are just deluded, people like David Gregory and Andrea Mitchell and Brian Williams, Chris Matthews, these people are a disgrace. Posterity will recognize them as the, accomplice, the accomplices that they are in treason. And the Federal Reserve, because, all right, it is a, a collaboration. It is collusion, no doubt. Instead of having the government do it directly by the Treasury counterfeiting and printing, they collude with Alan Greenspan and Al, or Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, they collude with him and allow knowingly allow him to buy all these treasuries at auction, trillions of dollars worth, when their portfolio is is less than a hundred billion. How do you come up with the money to buy over a trillion dollars as they have over the past few years? They are knowingly counterfeiting by allowing the Federal Reserve to buy extraordinary amounts of treasuries uh, for which they have no money, real money, to back it. This is treason. That's why Ben Bernanke, and go back to Alan Greenspan, and this administration should be tried for treason and suffer the consequences that is always a corollary to those found guilty, if indeed they are found guilty. And there is no way to palliate the reality of this. They can hide behind shrinkage all they want. They can find uh, large corporations to pull the wool over our eyes and screw us and deceive us into thinking we're buying the same amount of product as we historically have by selling it to us in the same size packages like these Reese cups. But the bottom line is they are destroying, they are stealing, they are plundering. It is treachery. They need to be prosecuted. And with all tyrants, what it comes down to in the end is it's them or us. And that is why they are moving. That is why they are buying all of the ammunition. That is why they are building all these uh, underground bunkers for themselves. They are planning because they know they are only temporarily deferring the inevitable collapse. It is happening in front of us and it is in our 
pantries and our refrigerators and it is in our gas tanks the treason is undeniable and there is only a matter of time before it completely collapses and that is what they're prepping for it's them or us and they've got the federal they're nothing but there may be 10 honorable noble statesmen in congress right now that are willing to stand up but all they're doing is buying time it is time to stop messing around it is time to flee sodom if you're in a blue state come south it is time to run for your local government that is where the power needs to be that is your last line of defense local state governments before it's too late 